Hello and welcome to part four in my video series on working with the GIMP, um, sculpting and animating. Parts one through three can be found on my YouTube channel. Okay, so what we've got, uh, what we developed in part one through three is a model that basically does this. If we hit Alt A, you can see the head moves back and forth and the hair is dynamic. The hair, uh, right now the key problem is the hair is falling through the scalp and it's not colliding. Um, with the object that is the emitter and we're gonna implement a workaround for that um, what I tried to do is I've tried several things I've tried to duplicate the object and add collision um, I've tried all kinds of different properties I can't make the hair collide with the scalp I'm not sure if that's um, a limitation at this point or if I just don't know uh, where to find that particular property um, if somebody on YouTube knows how to fix this let me know but here's the workaround uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come over with the head selected where it says hair dynamics. Okay. And we're just going to increase stiffness here. Okay. So I'm going to make that stiffness, I'm going to move it up to 0.4. All right. And now watch what happens when I hit Alt A. You can see the hair is stiff. Okay. Up to a certain point, And then you get hair dynamics beyond that, keeping the, the hair kind of off the scalp for now. Okay, so the hair um, moves back and forth the way it should, but we don't get any kind of a pass-through collision with the head. All right, so increase the stiffness an appropriate amount and then hit Alt-A. Um, I'd like to also note at this point that if you're in particle mode, okay, and you hit Alt-A, you don't see any hair dynamics, okay? So in order to, to see your hair dynamics, you do need to be, probably best bet is to be in object mode. All right, um, you can also... Uh, go to particle mode if you'd like and you can do things like you've got all your brushes here and you've got ways you can work with these particles I could choose like comb for example and you can comb the hair back or forward or you can sort of give it an initial starting value like that you can cut the hair you can add length you can smooth it you can do all kinds of things with the hair the weight paint the weight paint brush is also um, important that's how you can kind of add stiffness as well I could weight paint it and I could um, give that an initial value but basically by weight painting it we're doing the same thing as adding stiffness so I would suggest staying away from the weight paint brush for right now okay um, so I've kind of adjusted the hair got it where I want at the very beginning the next step is to animate the camera okay so uh, I'm gonna here's the trick and you know if you want to select the active camera in the GIMP you can do this it's pretty easy I'm gonna hit zero on the number pad and that's going to give me my camera view. I'm going to right click the edge and that's going to highlight the camera and make it the selected object. And then I'm going to hit period on the number pad to make the camera the center of my workspace. Okay? So now when I rotate by holding down the middle mouse button, the mouse the, the camera is the center of everything. Okay? So I'm going to go over that one more time real quick. All right, I'm going to select the head, and in order to make the head the center of my workspace, I can click period on the number pad, just like that. Now the camera rotates around the head, okay? So I'm going to select the camera by hitting zero on the number pad to look through it. I'm going to select it by right-clicking on the edge, and then I'm going to hit the period on the number pad to make the camera the center of my workspace. Okay, so I've selected my camera, and now I can work with it. Uh, we're going to animate this camera by parenting it to a second object. It's going to be easier to do that on a second layer. So, down here at the bottom, this is where the layers are, the, this, this row of boxes. And you can see that on the first layer, I've got an orange dot. That means there's something on that layer, and that's basically everything we have right now. If I click on layer 2, you can see it looks like everything's gone, but really, we're only looking at layer 2, which has nothing. Okay, so we're going to animate our camera on layer 2, and then once we get the camera set up the way we want, we'll show layers 1 and 2 together, and we'll see everything. The first move is to take the camera and move it to layer 2. So I'm going to hit M, as in mic, on the keyboard, okay, and it's going to say move to layer, all right, and I'm going to move it to layer 2. All right, it disappears because now our camera is on layer 2. Now I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to put it down level with the grid, okay? And over here on the right with our camera selected, 
all right, in object mode, you can see our transform properties are all here. I'm going to set location Z to 0, and I'm going to set the, the value of Y to 0, okay? Y is the green line, so we want the value of Y to be 0, and we want the value of Z, which is where the grid is, to be 0, okay? So I'm going to say Y equals 0, and I'm going to say Z equals 0, okay? And that's going to take our camera now, and it's going to put it on the grid. All right. Um, so I'm going to rotate out, and I'm just going to use R now to rotate the camera so it's facing the green line. So I'm going to hit R, and then I'm going to constrain it along the Z axis by hitting Z. All right, and I'm just going to rotate it so that it's facing straight down the red line like this. Okay, so now we've got a camera, and it looks like the camera is still facing down. So I can rotate it. I'm going to hit R and then Y, and I'll just sort of bring it up a little bit. And if I hit 0 now, all right, R and then Y within the camera, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Okay, great. So we've got a camera now that is facing along the red line, and we can make further adjustments later. later. Rotating the camera is pretty easy. The next step is to take the cursor and put it at point zero, 00, because when I go to layer 1, okay, everything we did, we did at the origin, okay, and our model is at the origin. Our camera's out here somewhere. We're going to take the cursor, we're going to stick it where the model is, okay, so that the camera is facing the cursor, and then we're going to add an object. Um, so here I'm in layer 2, and one way you can move the cursor, and you, want, you know you want the cursor at 0, 0, um, is you can go to View down at the bottom, and we can choose Properties, okay? And you can see here we have the 3D cursor location, all right? And we're just going to set all the values in 3D cursor location to 0, 0, 0, okay, and the last number, 0. Now we've got our 3D cursor, okay, set um, right at the center at the origin, okay? And I can go View, Properties to get rid of that dialog. All right, so now we've got the camera facing the cursor at the origin. The cursor is where all the action takes place, and we're going to add an object. I'm going to hit uh, 3 to go into side view. Let's try 7 for top down. I hit 7 on the number pad, and now I'm looking top down at my model. I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to add an empty. All right, um, so I've got an empty object. Now what an empty object is, I'm going to hit period on the number pad now to zoom in on that. What an empty object is, is a, an object that is invisible. We generally use it to control other objects. I'm now going to parent the camera to the empty. So I'm going to right click on the camera, and then I'm going to shift right click on the empty, all right, so that the empty is a different color than the camera. It's a lighter orange. And I'm going to hit Control P, and I'm going to choose Set Parent to Object. Boom. Okay? And you can see now that we have a line that connects the empty from to the camera. All right, so once we've parented the camera to the empty, I can hit R and then Z. All right, and after and I can rotate the camera. All right, as I rotate the empty, the camera moves too. All right, so that's the goal of this video: is to parent the uh, camera to the empty on layer two. And let's go ahead and take uh, one further step right now. We're going to go ahead and animate, and we'll just create a quick animation out of this. Um, with the empty selected, I'm going to keyframe the movement now. So I'm going to hit I to insert a keyframe, and we're going to insert just a rotation keyframe. So I'm going to click Rotation, and we're going to lock the rotation in frame 1. Let's go ahead and move out something like frame, I don't know, frame, uh, let's go to frame 40. Just picking an arbitrary number, and you can see I'm in frame 40. Once again, you can see the green line represents where we are. The yellow line represents where there is a keyframe. Um, I'm now going to rotate the empty, so I'm going to hit R. And then I'm going to hit Z. And then I'm just going to type in the number 90. 9, 0, enter. And you can see that it rotated the empty 90 degrees. And the camera is now 90 degrees away from where it was before. And I'm going to lock um, the position here by using I. And I'm going to lock rotation. If I jump back to keyframe 1, I now have an animation that goes Alt-A, okay? And if we want to show both layers at once, I can hold down Shift and I can select layer 1. And you can see down here at the bottom, it is now layers 1 and 2 are active by holding Shift. 
so I can see everything. If I want to look through the camera, I hit zero on the number pad. Okay, and that's what the camera sees. We may want to make an adjustment there eventually. Um, and if I hit Alt A to animate, you can see what the camera sees. All right, we've got our model animated right now, and we're rotating 90 degrees. So that is the upshot of video four. We have uh, adjusted the hair and animated the camera on a second layer. Thank you for watching.